Ready? Yeah. What's up, fellow fantasy-loving friends? Josh here with RSMP Tabletop, and I'm beyond excited because I have somebody that can actually paint and do hobbying for real with me. I have Eric from The Battle Standard. Hi, guys. How are you, Eric? I'm pretty good. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to have you here. So yeah. you did the Shatterpoint playthrough video with us a year ago, which is the like best... a long time ago, yeah. Yeah, it's the best performing video on the channel, but the way that you understand games, the way you can describe them and just the way like you care about them came across so much in that video. So cool. I'm super excited because we'll see if I can do it with painting. Well, I, I had said, I, you know, I mentioned to you earlier, I'm like, the viewers are going to get sick of watching somebody that's like, I'm not good at painting. I'm not good at this. I'm not good at that. So sure. I brought in somebody who is good. So my hope is today, I don't expect to do anything bang out super professional, but you had talked about using some speed paints to essentially make Star Wars Shatterpoint look really good for tabletop today. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I don't want you to, the first thing I want to cover is that, like, don't worry about stuff like that. Because, like, we're here to have fun, and, like, you'll get better with hours behind the brush, and there's no way to, like, shortcut and cheat past that. So, like, the way to get better at painting is painting, mm -hmm. and there's there's just no other answer. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I think we should just crack on, and I'm going to, hopefully, we can find some ways to address some of the problems that you kind of thought about with speed paints, and find that, like happy place where we can uh, like get some cool tabletop playable models but also at like a reasonable speed and then get to like doing what we want to do which is play games and yeah yeah man that sounds great to me and cool. the other thing i you had actually commented on the video i had brought up my shaking and yes. you said you had some tips and tricks to help so first I, I i thought you said something about like having a paint handle which i do so you yeah. have um i've always found like the crazy fancy stuff is worse than just a, a block. A block of wood? So I brought you a block. This is a gift from me oh, to you. Thank I you. put a little sticky tape on top. It's like two-sided tape. Um, and this will help with shaky hands. The other thing that helps with shaky hands, and this is something I teach to everybody, is like the more anchor points you have on all of your limbs, the less shake they'll be. So everybody has shaky hands, but like if you're painting and you have your elbows on the table and then everything that isn't touching something will make it shake more. So like, if you're doing this, you know, you can touch your pinkies together. This can all be holding stuff. These can be, you know, touching, you can even touch your wrists together. So the more stuff you have, the stabler this is, where like, if I'm doing this, this is shaky, but this is way better, right? Gotcha. So that's what this is for, you know? Similar concept with cinematography, I'm always constantly trying to pull the camera, I'm tucking my yeah. elbows, I'm getting everything to stop the shaking, so it, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, you gotta ball up. <laughs> yeah, right, no, seriously, it is, yeah, yeah, awesome. So did you have, like, an idea of what you wanted to, like, do, or? Uh, so, with Warhammer, I think part of the excitement for Warhammer for me is I like that my Warhammer world is the way I've made it. It's the colors I've chosen, the factions are the way I want, but yeah. one of the appeals to me about Star Wars is there's something that's so beautiful about the tightness of, like, I don't know, the, the way the universe uniform shine and sure. I, I don't want to shortcut this I'd like to make yeah. it look it doesn't have to be box stock but I'd make I'd like to make it look like it belongs in the Star Wars world what if we started easy and did like some of the b1s first I would love that cool I would love to just throw these guys in the trash because they were an absolute nightmare <laughs> <to be honest. laughs> uh, I play in Legion which is kind of like the Warhammer 40,000 version of the Star Wars universe which there's lots of models on the table I played those guys in Legion so I have built uh, like 80 of them so I totally understand where wow. you're from yeah you have to do the legs at the same time because you have to figure out how they stand but they don't yes. want to go on the body right I just I struggled so much I thought what I liked about the build for this though is yeah. it started off simple it, yeah. the first like three I built zero problems the fourth one got a little harder and then from there it progressed and those were I think the last ones that you build and I mean it's that way for a reason. Well, let's like <laughs> slap some paint on them and never look at them again. Right. Cool. Awesome. So yeah. where do we start from? Well, so I guess where we start, the one thing that you requested before we started painting is you asked me to do a Zenithal Prime. Yes. I've mentioned that before but again I'm not really a painter and I don't have a good enough understanding. Maybe you can explain it better than I did, differently than I did or is sure. it literally just for the shadows? So I mean it is from the word, you know, it is to represent the light on a model or the light like hitting a model, right? And all we're doing in painting, if you really think about what painting is, it's like replicating light on a surface, but like scaled down really small, right? So finding a way to give you what is essentially like a recipe on what to put where, right? So like if you were to go from here to traditional opaque paints, it'll still show you like, hey, this part should be darker than this part, mm -hmm. which is something that you can obviously do just by looking at a black prime black model and like deducing for yourself. But it's easier if you do this for you. 
But if we're gonna do speed paints, it's essential, right? Because if you just prime model black and then start putting the speed paints on it, they're they're translucent, which means like it, you know, you can see through to the primer underneath. So a black prime model, if you start putting speed paints on it, it's just going to be black. Gotcha. So, yeah. So if we're gonna try and do some speed paint stuff today, this part's essential, and then we're gonna kick it up a little bit more than what you've been doing as well, and we're gonna take some even even more steps before we actually put paint onto the model. Because the thing that I tell everybody as well, so the more steps you take before you apply color, the better the end result will be when it comes to speed paint stuff. I'll have you rate my Xenophil Prime. What, what do you think? <laughs> I think it's pretty good for, there's a little bit of like texture here and there, but that just comes with like rattle cans sometimes, you know. Gotcha. If you ever want to like upgrade and get away from rattle cans, you can get away from that. But like, that's easier said than done. Also, it looks like you forgot to put the back of their heads on. Oh. Well, you know, mine are just <laughs> gonna be fine. a little different. Yeah. <laughs> you just have like a cool haircut. Uh, so I'm gonna pop the this stuff off of this, and then you can just stick it right on, and it will stay forever. You could like chuck this at a wall. Yeah. Okay. So the first thing we're gonna do is just an all-over black wash all over the whole model. So I've got a little holder here on my fancy fancy palette, and we can pop this in, and you can use this too. I am just going to. Oh, I got you another gift too. I forgot. This is um, like a little autism popper, but if you put paint in it, then when it dries, you can just like pop it out and oh, it's really nice. So I've been using right. this as like a kind of dry palette. Nice. Yeah, so I'm just gonna add some of this wash into this here. I'm gonna take, get a bunch and then just water it down a little bit just cause some water will help it to flow a bit better into where what we're trying to do. We're trying to, essentially just within, within reason coat this whole thing. I'm just gonna start with this first guy and I'm gonna start from the top and work my way down because gravity wants to pull the wash down, right? So I'm just gonna start putting this all over and this stuff has like some workable time in which you can push it around, right? And this is just going to help reinforce the shadows that you've done with that Zenithal, right? And anytime I see things like kind of um, depositing itself in a place where I don't like it, I can just pull it away while it's still wet and push it into those like recessed parts, right? So you're looking to get this into like the, the shadowy parts or into like... I'm gonna put it all over, but yes, I want it to, if it's gonna pool, I want it to pool, you know, in a place that makes sense and is going to like build those shadows more. Gotcha. Should I just start dipping here? And yeah, yeah, go, go to town, right? Awesome, let's try it. But yeah. this block already, I mean, it's just, you can like, you can just kind of set it down and it stays. It's, yeah. I don't know, it's nice already. Yeah, I've got I've got these big ones too, which I've really fa found I like a lot. That's why I gave you a little one. <laughs> the good ones for me. Yeah. <laughs> How does that look as far as the... Yeah, it looks great. Okay. So all we did here is, um, so like when you shoot the, zen the white zenithal from above, right? Uh, one of the things that it will do is blast out all of the details on the upward facing thing, right? It's just gonna make it all white. So this, even on just little things like this guy's face here, you can see he's got like a line on his forehead and then mm -hmm. across here, right? So like that's re-establishing these things. Um, and then once this dries, we're gonna hit it with a white dry brush. Now we're gonna move on to the dry brushing them. And I don't, have you ever seen this, a texture palette before? No. This is essentially the same thing as like a, a dry palette or a normal palette that you use, but it has texture, you know, in it, right? Um, so, Normally, I guess, I assume the first time you dry brush, like you put, you dip your brush in the paint and then you're wiping it off on like a paper exactly, towel or something. Yeah, yeah. This is fine if you want to use this, it's not a big deal. But um, because paper towels are absorbent, because they're usually used to absorb like a spill or something, uh, it also is going to suck the water out of your brush and then out of the paint as well, which obviously we're trying to dry brush, but you still want a little bit of moisture because mm -hmm. if you don't have any moisture at all, that's when it gets chalky and you get that like chalky finish. Uh, so this lets you figure out how much is gonna be on your brush and what it's gonna look like and get most of the paint off, but it isn't absorbent, so it isn't sucking all the water out as well. So um, you can buy one of these, you can make one, which is actually like a really fun DIY thing where you can like take some bits and gravel and stuff and glue it on together and make like a fun thing. Um, but I bought one because 
an extra. Actually, my wife got this for me for Christmas, but yeah. So I'm just gonna take some of this white paint here and get it like into my brush here. And then as you can see, you know, using the texture on this thing, I can like kind of see what my brush is doing and I can see like how much is gonna be coming off on my model. So once I get most of it off, just like before, we're gonna start from the top and work our way down, just kind of whacking it all over the edges of all this so that it catches on the raised surfaces of the model. Yeah, so for backtracking so far, we've just used null oil all over. Yep. And then we just A did- acrylic white. It's bold titanium white, if you wanna reference that all okay. over. And now we are using Vallejo Express Color Bag of Bones. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> so right. I just put like four drops into my little br uh, palette thing here. And then I'm adding a little bit of water too because this will just give it a bit more. So these uh, Express Colors are a bit thicker and a bit inkier than the average contrast paint. So I'm just giving it a bit more flow and uh, then we're just gonna do this all over just like we did the wash. And top to bottom and just- Yeah, so top to bottom, let gravity help you work. And you know, just take your time and you don't have to have, I'm gonna put this in the middle. So like I just mixed it up and loaded up my brush, but you don't have to, like one of the things that you were saying, it like pools a lot. If you like touch this to, you know, your paper towel, paper towel first, you can get some of that out and then you can have a much more controlled application, right? And then, So I think the only things we're gonna not wanna get this on is their gun, but if you get some on the gun, it's fine because we're just gonna cover it up with black. So you've got to play some Shatter Point now at this, you know, I've now. played a lot, yeah. And it's been up for about a year now, a little coming over up on, Coming up on a year, yeah. What are your impressions? What do you think they've done right? What do you think could be worked on a little bit? What, what, what's, your, what's your overall? My overall is that I love the game. Uh, they're... It's like my current favorite miniature game. Uh, if somebody like asked me if I want to play something and what I'd want to play, that's the first thing I would say. Really? Yeah. Uh, but like, I'm a huge Star Wars guy, and I'm also a huge skirmish game guy. Uh, like, I play a lot of games. I'm you know actively like involved in probably like eight systems or something right now. But I prefer skirmish games. I like it having as few models on the table as I can you know, within reason. Before this game came out, my, if you asked me what the best game on the market was, I would say like Marvel Crisis Protocol, which is by the same company. I wanna play that next, yeah. absolutely. That game looks amazing. So this is, it's by the same company, um, and the gameplay is excellent. I'm just not a big like superhero guy. Yeah. Uh, I never really got into those things. I was more of a Star Wars kid. So I was like, man, if they just took MCP and gave it a Star Wars skin and had like Jedi's fighting bounty hunters and stuff, I would be all over it. And then like a couple months after I said that, they announced that this game was coming out and I was like, oh my God, you know. <laughs> Home uh, run. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I like pretty much switched fully over to this. I still have MCP teams and play it and like it, but um, you famously have ADHD as yep, well. Sure right? do. Just like me. Uh, so one of the problems I have in this world is that like games take a long time and you can spend a long time doing nothing while you watch your opponent do stuff, right? Yep. Uh, that's not very much of a thing in this game. Uh, it's super back and forth. You're always kind of reacting to what your opponent does because it's alternating activations and you have stuff to do on your opponent's turn, um, whether it's like defending attacks or using abilities when things happen. It just like asks a different game, it asks a different question than all the other games in this space do, right? Uh, normally, like if you're playing Crisis Protocol, you'll have five models on the table or whatever, and y the question the game asks you is, okay, if you're looking at the board state right now, what is the best thing you can do with one of the models on your team, right? So you kind of need to think about multiple turns in advance, what the board state might look like, and think about how you order the activations of your models in the best way, right? Okay. Which is hard to do for something like us. We're not good at seeing into the future. We're not good at holding multiple things in our brain like that, you know, but we're very good at doing one thing, right? So this game, instead of picking a model, you just flip that top card, right? If you remember back to when we recorded like the Learn to Play episode, yep. it's all about you flip that card and that's the model you're forced to go with, right? Mm -hmm. 
So this game is asking you in instead, it's saying, okay, here's the board state. Here's the model you must activate. What is the best activation right now to advance the game, right? Instead of playing chess, it's like solving a chess puzzle, which is a totally different skill set, right? Mm -hmm. So I've become really, really interested in that, and I really love that part of the game. Uh, Black, do you have a black? So I've thing? got, uh, yes, I've got Grim Black. Perfect. So I've got Pro Krill Transparent Black. So this is like their kind of um, very small speed paint line. Okay. So this is exciting. We'll see what the Pro Black looks like yeah. against the Army Painter. This should be like pretty similar. They might have a, di a slightly different finish, which will be interesting. Because the one thing I really like about this one is that uh, it dries like pretty matte. There's nothing wrong with ever adding water to anything. Because like, if you need to do another pass, you can do another pass, right? But you can't like undo a pass. It's been my experience that every model needs at least two coats. You do your first like Usually, base yeah. coat, yeah. You get the feel for it. The second one fixes a lot of the mistakes, but I mean. And then the third coat is probably the one that you need to really just tighten everything up, but it's like, you gotta do at least two. I was surprised by that. I don't know why I had thought when I first got into this, it was like, you just paint it and it's done. And I've never painted anything before, so I guess that was just my impression of it, but yeah. I was kind of shocked when I'm like, wait, now I gotta do the same thing I just did with, you know, all 18 of those models again. And I when got a little bit onto his fingers, so all I did was clean off my brush, and then I'm just touching it to where I got it on, and then just sticking the brush in my mouth. Gotcha, it sucks it right back up. Yeah. I'm just hopping around and like touching up some things that are first like passive speed paint. You know, maybe it's still a little too uh, light for my liking while I'm waiting for my black to dry because I'm also probably going to do another pass of black. So, When you paint, do you typically pick up one model and you paint that one model start to finish or do you kind of production line and go through and do all the... In a skirmish game like this, yes. That's one of the problems of army painting, right, is like... It's all a matter of like getting the chemicals from your brain, right? So this is like a thing we're doing for fun. You know, we're trying trying to get the chemicals out of the brain. And when you are slogging through like 20 of the same guy over and over again, you never get that dopamine of finishing something, right? Yeah. You get a huge whack of it at the end when you finish 20 guys. But I would I would tell anybody who wants to batch paint like batch paint in things of like 5, 3. I think you were saying when you were painting the Gene Stealer cult that you had the whole army in front of you, you picked one color and you did it on every single model. Yep. I was like, God, that is brutal. I production, like, <laughs> but no, and, and you know what? I think that's part of my ADHD though. I know that sounds weird, but for me, it's like, it lets me know how many steps I have left because you sure. can guess how many colors. So what I like is I, I start here, as I paint them, I put them on this side. Yeah. Then I go through and for me, it's a way to keep track. And I know it sounds tedious, but it's kind of what I really like and enjoy about it. And it is like the most efficient, best way to batch paint. I just, that is, it's too You'd much. pull your hair out. <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't do, you're stronger than me. Well, you know what I really like about hearing that though? It just goes to show you that they're, you know, everybody's different. There's different totally. ways for different people and you just got to figure out what works best for you. Yeah, I mean, we already broached this before, right? There's no right, there's no wrong. We're painting toy soldiers in a grown man's basement. <laughs> uh, so I think we're going to do the base with like regular acrylic, like opaque acrylic paints. Yeah. Um, I got a regular dead white here. Cool. I was thinking we could do like a gray oh, for this gray, one. Yeah, yeah. And then if you wanted to do like some like desert colors or something for yours. Yeah, this would be cool. Perfect. Yeah. And I don't think I've ever used that one, so it'll be something yeah. different. So This is, oh, it's leather brown. Yes. So I've got game color, black, dead white, stonewall gray. You've got leather brown and then bone white. So I'm gonna do bone white first and then I'm gonna just do this over the top of it? No, I think I think I would base do just base coat the whole thing, do like two thin coats with this to cover this whole okay. thing. And I should thin it out with water or just use Yeah, this? so I broke out a wet palette as well. I don't know if you ever use a wet palette. Before. I haven't, but a wet palette is the next thing that yeah. I'm gonna buy. Most people tend to say like this is uh, meant to keep your paint at a workable texture for an entire session but you can define whatever a session is to you. So like, I'm just gonna add some water to this and I wanna get it to that like thin, not like milk, but like, you know, get it to a point where it's gonna be super smooth and we're gonna take our time and do a couple of coats to get to like a perfect opaque. I'm all about finding ways to fast forward through this boring stuff, right? So like, I don't find base coating interesting, <laughs> but if I were painting these models, I could have them separate from the base, and instead of 
base coating this, I could just shoot this gray through my airbrush, right? Just to fast forward. It is just like, honestly, like not even video related wise, like just chilling and painting with somebody, like it, it is fun to do. Oh, interesting, you're doing the whole rim too. Oh, do you not do the rim? I am die hard uh, black base rims. Okay. I will die on this hill. I'm gonna make your paint a little thinner too. You gotta join me over in the nice thin paint club. I'm into it. The, the last thing you do to finish a model is paint the base rim and you, you get out your nice black and you are tracing that line around and it just like, it, it has this like perfect finish to a model where you're like, it wasn't done and now all of a sudden, boom, it's done. Gotcha. You know? But that's just like a, an extra little bonus. I think this is a pretty cool juxtaposition. It's, it looks like two units got called in and they just came from different places. So like that's why these guys are a little bit more weathered and burnt. Like yeah. I even love the story, you know? Gotcha. One thing I learned from today that I will take with me going on, you know, from here on out is I'm gonna do the nun oil before I start painting. I think yeah. that's that's such a great thing to do. And again, I've I've just been nervous about it. I did buy some, but I haven't used it yet. But now having you here to show me the application, it I mean you can see the detail, you can see the pop between that and like you can see where all the dry brushing we did earlier just shines yeah. out. I mean it's still a little wet, but when that dries up, you're gonna it's yeah. it's gonna shine. Like and from here, if you wanted to, you could go in and start line highlighting things as well. You know, that's the difference between like, I would say like tabletop and tabletop plus, mm -hmm. you know. Well, Eric, thank you for coming on the channel. Awesome, yeah. And uh, you know, I appreciate all the info you gave us on Star Wars and the game, and you finally taught us some uh, tips and tricks on painting, so I don't have to just sit here and say, I'm new and I don't know how to do or what to do. You showed us some, some new stuff, so I appreciate that. Yeah, and again, there is nothing better than painting, right? For learning how to paint, you know. You can, I, there are people that are watching this video right now because they want to get better at painting. So I just want to like say, you can learn a lot of stuff and you can learn stuff from me and find a local game store near you and go and ask the manager of your local game store, how do I get better at painting? And hopefully the one thing that they'll say just like me is you can watch a lot of stuff, but you also have to paint. So don't be scared, don't be intimidated. Anything that you can do can be fixed and just have fun with your toys. So that's it, we encourage you to go out and just paint. Until next time, stay safe.